Hello everyone, Attack Power here with Game 2 between Emil and Colonel Koenig in the playoffs of the Steel Division 2 Division 1 League. Let's dive right in here to Orsha East. And on the left, in the red, we have Colonel Koenig playing Festung Dunkirchen on Maverick Income. And on the right, in the blue, we have Emil playing 17th SS on V for victory. Oh, this is exciting. This is my favorite income matchup here, I'll be honest with you. V for victory, trying to survive the crushing power of Maverick in V phase. Oh, so exciting. But Festung over here on the left. Um, a, a, a division that seems has seemed very popular this year. Um, you know, once like you get through those 20 bands, um, this division seems to always kind of be left, and it, it appears to be a division people feel comfortable with and that it has the strength it needs. Uh, Recon tab, not a ton here. I mean, you have the Yacht Commandos, and those are very good, uh, but that's just about it. Like, there's really not much else here to play with. The Infantry tab, I mean, pretty expensive, uh, expansive, excuse me, with a lot of variety. So we have the Yacht Comp, which are like the highlight of the division. They're phenomenal. They're Brandenburgers with a Panzer Shrek. And arguably, yeah, the, the Brandenburger is... I guess better, but for, for at least for my personal opinion, I'd prefer a Jagdkamp. I'd much prefer a Panzer Shrek on a unit than a grenade, especially a unit that costs 35 points that I don't want walking around the forest anyway. Yeah, they don't have commando, but they still seem to put out plenty of damage anyway. Um, I don't feel like Jagdkamp really lack in, in, in efficiency. Uh, then you have uh, the Stolstrup, Stolstrupen, which are nice grenade throwing units for 15 points. Pretty excellent. Uh, Festung Grenadiers, just fat, chunky troops. Pioneer came okay, Pioneers, also more Panzer Strikes. Yag Pioneers are terrible. Uh, they're single flamethrower with a rifle. They're really not good. And then you have Kaya Marine Infantry, more Flak Truppen with lots of Panzer Strikes on all that fun stuff. So Panzer Strikes just everywhere. Uh, then the Tank Tab, very limited, just a Shook 3 inch a Panzer 4 card. Really no options there. Support Tab, solid. IG 33s, IG 18s, usual machine guns. You get the Erg Confolet, which is phenomenal. Uh, it's, it's, it's just super duper good. Uh, the AT Tab, Really solid here. Great mix of pack third, a pack everything's 36, 38, 40s. Uh, you have Martyr 3, and you have a singular Yag Panther, a double vet. A tab, amazing. You get uh, Flak 105s. He's not using them, though. Kind of sad to see that. Uh, 88s and Flak 43s here. There's other things. I, I want to say there's a Flak Veerling or Zeeling in this thing. Um, but anyway, uh, the Arty tab, pretty good. Lots of big guns. Uh, but not much more after, other than the uh, off map we see there. And then the air tab, very limited, just some bombers and some not so great fighters, and then the recon there. On the other side, 17th SS, I am in shock that this made it through bands. This division is still phenomenal. I don't think people fear it the way they used to, but I still think it's fantastic with essentially no real weaknesses. Uh, the recon tab, phenomenal. SPWs to spare, it's really quite good. <clears throat> The infantry tab really good. You have uh, you got your SS Legionati for CQC domination. You have regular Panzergrens. Then you have Volk Deutsche, which are basically Panzergren MG 34s for five points less. They get disheartened. Big whoop. Um, if it's not a CQC unit, I don't find disheartened to be that painful of a of a negative trait. Uh, the tank tab incredible. Uh, it's all Stug fours, which. Uh, the Stroop 4 is the best medium tank in the game, so it's just a really good that way. Now, it doesn't have any variety, right? It would be nice to have a Panther or something, but you don't. You don't really need it, though. Uh, support tab, really good. You get two cards of IG-33s if you want them, along with the usual uh, mix of stuff. No commander here uh, for either player, actually. No commander. Uh, the anti-tank tab, really good. You get Jagdpanzer 4s, which are really great. Uh, pack 40s, Pack 38s, Martyr 3, super efficient. Both players having those Martyr 3s. Uh, AA tab, limited but solid i mean you get good options but it is limited stk z71 here and flak 36 already tab awesome two cards of neville for 300 mils i think you can bring 150s i'm not mistaken got sk 18s here and the russian 122s and find the air tab this is actually one of the chunkiest s uh, 17th ss air tabs i've ever seen you have the ju87 uh cluster and uh cannon i believe buster cannon or maybe it's just the buster uh it might, it might be just buster bf109 g4 u4 solid fighter and ju88 ju87 bombers and a cheapo recon so diving in here another thing Festu festing has here is the traction but on the flip side Mamil has the traction but he's just bringing his leader in the traction so nothing actually super great like rabbi although this is an interesting move throwing a leader up here so like the usual mg42 or something Pioneer Fear trying to get its grenade off. Not going to succeed. Gets hit by the Flammenwerfer. Machine Gun going to hit him as well. Looks like he's just going to lose this leader. I, yeah, this is why I don't like the leaders in tractions. I don't want them to get to the front line this early. 
It, it's honestly too early. SBW 233s doing the, what they do. They have phenomenal HE damage. Erg Conflict going after it, though. Pretty long range for that Erg Conflict, and doesn't do nearly as well at long range. Pack 36 goes down, though. Flammenwerfer goes down. Up north, uh, Emil basically surrendering this to uh, Colonel Koenig here. So we see the SPW-233 going after the Erg Conflict. Going to get forced off. Goes down. Oof. Those, those things, so good. So, so, so good. It's a good thing that they're not more common, because it would be kind of gross. SBW-233 goes down to... I honestly have no idea. What just killed that? Well, th there must have been something here. Stolstrupen. What was it? Must have been like a Pack 36 that just caught it, and uh, they, they traded. Anyway, SBW-233 does have higher HE damage, which is why it's so good. It's this higher HE damage that just makes it so phenomenal. Almost got this other pack 36. Uh, Koenig obviously calling those in to try to push off these many armored cars that are doing so much damage right now. 1311 currently. And Koenig now on a 1410, grabbing this flag up north. Mamil definitely is going to want something. He did, he did throw a Volkdeutsch here just to hold this flag. Very smart there because he knew his line was going to collapse. So he didn't want to make it super obvious that he had nothing there. Erg Conflict up finding the 222 here. Should win at this at this close range. It should pretty much crush that thing. Yep. Now it goes. Misses the JU87 misses the other one. Going after the Pack 38 here. Getting the kill. Wow, early air force here from Emil. 17th SS is not really known for its air force. It's 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 like it gets expensive pretty quick. If I'm not mistaken. Like the Air Force itself. Yeah, it gets yeah. I'm surprised when they put so many points in this, especially against Festung. Festung has like plenty of AA. So like my first reaction to playing this against this division would not be let's break out the Air Force. Especially in a division that's like, yeah, it's got it's got good planes. It's it, but they're not like they're not phenomenal and it's definitely not like good slot costs. So definitely interesting. But Mamil clearing out the town here, and it, technically it's his town, so he was able to capture that back. This is a very easy flag for Red to capture. SPW-233 spotting that Pack 36 again. It looks like it's going to get it out just in time, killing that off. Big kill there. Now I see a Stug 4 coming in. The Urkonflet working so hard. I mean, they're working overtime. He brought three of them in already. These, this is not the best place for them, though. Like, it's pretty close. Like, you want to be able to take advantage of the whole, like, 1500 meter range thing. They're very good. I mean, obviously, the long range, they do far less damage because they have a harder time landing hits. But, like, they're so good at that range because they can't get shot back by any infantry. At this close range, they can be shot back at. Although, they do a ton of damage because they're so close. They did do a good job of breaking down all these SBWs. But now Emil on the 1311, capturing this flag down south and capturing the flag on the hill here. Though, truthfully, Mamil should have the advantage. I mean, he's got two, 20 extra points a tick, which is not a small amount. For Koenig, that'd be another infantry unit. Interesting, too, both players bringing two C-phase cards. That's really interesting from Koenig because he doesn't get that many points. I mean, they're cheap. I'm not saying it's wrong. They're cheap. They're 20 points, but... Still seems like a lot in C-Phase. I'm surprised he just didn't shift one of those cheap infantry to B-Phase. I mean, it's got three cards in B-Phase, but they're all on average price or expensive. I would say average price is 25, cheap is 20, and getting more expensive is 30. And of course, 35 is very expensive and 40 is abnormal, but obviously ridiculously expensive. JU-87 strike down south, but now there is an 88 here. This is that Flak 31. It's the Russian 85 mil reboard into an 88. They're not that great. Ooh, stop. Just in time, Pack 36 is going to survive. These things make for better AT guns than they do AA pieces at the end of the day. They got the nice 2,000 meter range. Panzergren getting spotted here. Flak 43, so phenomenal. This is a great AA piece. 
Remember, the key difference between the 43 and the 36 for the flak is that this has higher rate of fire, and that difference in uh, fire rate is is just worlds of difference. So Emil making great progress here on the hill. The Ijanati tossing their Molotov early, but the Stolstrupin still got off their grenade. Going to take out that SS. I mean... Emil's decision to basically abandon the north has really allowed him to just pour troops into the center and stuff. We see this a lot in this map. This is a very common strategy. I'm waiting for the game where both players abandon the north and each player has like one unit here. <laughs> because they both have the same idea. But like we can see Koenig, he's got even more coming. Why? Oh, he's trying to swing this down. That's what he's doing. All right, that makes more sense. He's swinging this down here. Urkonfleta getting caught out by the Volkdeutsch. That's oh so bad. You do not want these to be dead. They're just so good. Wow, it took no damage, really. Oh, Stug 4 getting a very lucky crit there. Crew kill. That Marta 3 could have easily cleaned up that Stug 4 there. Ouch. And Orin Jesus smacking Koenig in the face, saying, No, you will not. I don't know what he's not doing, but he's definitely not getting lucky there. Black 43 is pinned, so it's going to be a lot harder for this to actually stop all these things. Is he? Yeah, he chose to. He's letting the... Wow, the other Ju-87 breaks off before it ever drops his mind. He actually would have gotten it off, too. 122 going after that AA. Definitely a good choice there. Although there's plenty of AA. Oh, actually, there's really not. Koenig's really kind of... He's, he's vetted his Black 43s up really hard. J87 down again, which means he doesn't actually have a ton, and then he'll be stuck relying on the stupid uh, 88s. Shug 4 goes down to the Shug 3, but not before it got a penetration. Urkonfla now has, has now fallen back far enough that it's not going to get hit by infantry machine guns anymore. Here comes those infantry to swing into this tree line. Down south, the SPW-222 and the uh, Shug 4 here supporting on the hill. Cam Pioneer try to get by. The Flak 30, the Pack 36 could definitely try to take out this 222, although there's a lot of infantry here watching, so it probably would not get away with it. This is what this is what this is so good at. Just you can't even like move up into it. Emil with a very strong position on this hill. This is always the biggest danger. I mean, I think red side is much harder on this map. I don't think the map's horribly imbalanced. It, it's just not. The Orsha maps are, are pretty close in terms of balance. But I definitely think red the red side is is more difficult. It's so easy to get pushed off this hill. And, of course, once you're off this hill, then the opponent can cut off all the reinforcements road going into this flag here. And then they can slowly roll you back there. Ooh, is this Jagdkampf going to die in the transport? That would be devastating. Nope. Ooh, this Flak 43 will go down, though. Ouch. And that was his double vet... Black 43, so that air cover gone. Although, what, two JU-87s are dead, I think? Well, here comes another one right off the bat. Are there four in the A phase? No, there's only three. We're about to hit B phase, though, and uh, Emil's <laughs> income advantage will um, uh, drop <laughs> very significantly. Stug 4 gets the shot off on the Stug 3. Ouchies. Pack 40 are going to die to the JU-87. There's no AA to stop it. No fighters for Koenig at all. Watch this bad boy go down. Boom. Wow. Very nice. Air conflict almost taken out here by the Stug. Now the Artie finishes it off. Ouch. Ouch. So sad. And now this one's going to die off too. And that there might be one more left. I'm not sure. There should be four. I, I only remember seeing three, but maybe there was a four somewhere and I missed it. 88 covering the reinforcement road. Might get this Panzergren. Mm, it's going to have an opportunity here. Nope. Just kidding. Pack 36 did move into position. Try to get the 222, but the 222 falls back quick. Oh, just kidding. The 88 did get another chance and takes out that Panzergren in the transport. Now Stug 4 on the hill here with the Martyr 3. Stug 3 coming in and see, like, the Flak, the Flak 105 would be phenomenal here. You plop it here. It one taps each one of these one at a time. 
We're now in the B phase, so Koenig obviously needs to make the most of this. I'm surprised he hasn't put this Festing Grenadier on return fire just for the sake of, like, keeping this flag. If this one's getting eat chewed up, that's a lot of machine gun fire. Flag grabbed here. Koenig making a push down south a bit. JU-87 Tank Buster moving in. Going for that Stug 3 again. This was a honestly, like, a weird choice. There's so few tanks in Festung. Like, why why bring the JU-87? Oh, yeah, that thing is... Oh, oh, yep, there it is. 88 failed completely. Now, in its defense, it was just unloading. So, you know. Can't be too harsh on it this time. Oh, now there's an IG-33 on the hill, too. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's so bad. Twelve, twelve now. Longverfer might get killed before it unpins. Infantry getting into the woods, but there's a Legionati here, and they absolutely will smack this pioneer. Oh yeah, no chance. Embarrassing little chance. Oh, they did get their grenade off. Yep, they got it off. Boom. Ouchies. Meal up some points here. IG thirty three, the real danger now. Take out every one of these soft targets. IG-33 counter coming in. 88 did was forced to unload really far back. The southern push from Koenig going relatively well, though a bunch of reinforces coming in from Emil. The final art conflict, there it is. Finds the pack 38 easy kill there, but now it might die to the MG-42. That would be very unfortunate. Koenig try, beats the retreat. Not sure he's going to make it. Now Emil pushing off the hill. Yeah, again, I think Koenig should have just hid this festing somewhere deeper in the wood, in the buildings here. And now it's a, back to a 1410 from Emil recapturing this flag here. SDK Z71, if it doesn't get insta-killed by the Panda Shrek, could shred this Pioneer. Koenig just getting rolled back right now. Things not going super well. Now the incomes have flipped. So Koenig now has more points, like has received more points and will continue to receive more. Pack 40 in an interesting spot here. Very nice. Pick up the kill on the Mario 3, but the IG-33 now probably going to wipe this Pack 40 off the map. Ooh, gets an APCR hit on the Stug 4. There's that IG-33 shot. Ooh, just misses. Jagdkampf should be able to beat these Panzergrens pretty easily, I would think. They're in rifle range and everything. Pack 40 on the run. Oh, and the IG-33 counters. The IG-33 successfully. Nice play there by Koenig. Here comes an SPW doing a runner here. Oh, no, I thought it was going, like, all the way. Jagdkampf running from the Legionati. I, I would do that, too. Pack 38. Unable to finish off that Stug 4. Already coming down now on the Yag Commando. Still 13-11 for Emil. And Yagcom showing off why they're so good. Panda Shrek taking out that SPW. And again, that's why I just think they're better. Stug 4 died. I'm not even sure to what. Oh, the Stug 3 probably? It would have to be the Stug 3. Or the Bazooka. Actually, just kidding. It was probably... Mm, nah, I only see one Bazooka around miss... Uh, Panda Shrek around missing. Gonna try to poke out up north, trying to find some weakness. Doesn't find it, though. Recon finally goes down. 15-9 from Emil here with this push in the center, developing so well. Now he's grabbed re -grab this flag. And this is actually, I'm, I'm feeling the issue I mentioned earlier with Koenig's deck. Uh, he really doesn't have any, like, cheapo infantry in B. And he used most of his Festion Grenadiers already. So he doesn't have things to, like, just spam until C phase. And I just felt like that was a really weird choice. He wasn't losing out that much availability by just putting one of those infantry cards in B. 
IG-18, no chance here in this position. Down it goes. Ooh. Yeah, I come got hit hard. 233 goes down, though. Definitely a good kill there. Pack 38 trying to do the work on the Stug 4. The big thing with the Stug 4, of course, is that 100 millimeters of frontal armor making it just so much better than a Stug 3. It's kind of nuts how that 10 millimeters armor makes a difference. But that threshold is, I think, the most important thresh armor threshold in the game. 90 to 100. Because so many medium tank guns, especially allies, but just in general, fall within that range. So like the Pac-38 is a perfect example. Its AP shell does 100 millimeters of penetration. On the Stug 3, with its 90 millimeters of armor, you get a much more consistent penetration. The Stug 4, on the other hand, with its 100 millimeters of armor, means the Pac-38 struggles a whole lot more to get that penetration. It's the same with a T-34. I'm pretty sure that's 100 millimeters. Sherman is 90 millimeters. So that, that number is so important in game that adding that 10 millimeters of armor to the tank just completely changes its 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 effectiveness in a fight it's pretty nuts look at these blue oh the spw 231 that's a pretty big kill Kenny working hard to clear out all these armored cars which could definitely hold him up now we're at 17 minutes and Emil's still on the double tick which is pretty disaster for Koenig. At this point, he's received 300 more points than than Mamil. But this is where he should be able to start turning around. We're, we're starting to see the strain, I think, on... on uh, ooh. Can't let Jagdkampf die. He really can't. They're just so key to the whole division working well because they're so freaking good. Um, I, I feel like we're starting to see the strain of Mamil's line a little bit. He's not. He can't replace losses, really. Stug 4 coming in, but that's like the only thing he'll buy for this tick. So we, we are seeing the strain. But will it be enough? It always feels like one of those things, though. Like, you're like, as the V for Victory player, you feel like it's going pretty well. You're like, oh, my plan worked. I'm, I got some advantage in A, and now I'm holding it through B. SDKFZ is there to stop the big DL 217 to get either bomb off. I think the answer is no. Oh, that's a bummer. That is not a cheap buy either. It's 140 points. If that dies, oh my. Bomb did get off. Oh. oh, oh, oh that's such a loss. Wow, that sucks getting only one bomb run out of that. And he's not even following it up with any. Oh, he is pushing forward now. Wow, that was that was rough. I don't know. I don't think Koenig knew that STKFZ was there. I don't remember it firing at anything. So this Legionary finally got pinned down here. Still 1311 for Ramil. Koenig pretty overwhelming on the map right now in terms of unit numbers. But he's, he's getting a little bit of tunnel vision. Yes, you definitely want to try to get back on this hill, but if it's costing that many resources, I feel like he's be got a better chance down south. It's tough to say, though. It's always really tough to say. But these Div 1 players are Division 1 players because they're so good at pivoting their offense. It really is. That's like the key thing. The second these guys sense that you've pushed really hard in a singular place... They will turn and just attack whatever flank it is in that. Panzer IV just driving in at fast move. I, I, I don't understand why Koenig keeps doing this. This is the fourth or fifth unit here that has died. You, I mean, you could see it really quite clearly. Death, death. Uh, there's some other ones here. Death. I mean, everyone knows this is always covered off. Emil has really gotten a lot of value out of his MG42s. They've really been like defensive bastions, every single one. It's easy to underestimate how useful these these like set machine guns can be. They can really hold the line. They really buy time for you. And certain ones, such as the MG42 or a 50 cal, can really actually kill units off. Like they can really be quite strong. Stug 3 zipping in. Yeah, 
And we're now in the C phase. I mean, Koenig has the advantage for the, at least the next four or five minutes. And we see some off map. 194. I think there's a bigger one. I think there's like a 380. But the 194 is still plenty dangerous. Here comes the JU-87 for that Panzer IV. Can be seen by the infantry. 88 way too far back to save the day. Panzer IV goes down easily. JU-87 tank busters are very good. 140 millimeters of penetration. They can take out most tanks relatively efficiently. There's the 194. Is there something to follow it up? Not really. No. God, an SDK of Zed. Die, crappy transport. Yagkamp can obviously easily kill his SPW if he can get a line of sight on it. And if Gunning knows it's there. It looks like he does. Oh, no. They shot in the infantry and revealed themselves. Hands are going finally going down. Should give Koenig that flag back. Finally back to 12-12. Is Koenig getting the breakthrough he so desperately needs? Ooh. Now, you may be wondering why this unit just surrendered. It should be within the circle of this fear. The reason is the, the veterancy circle is bigger than the no surrender circle. I know there's nothing that visually indicates that, but that is the truth. The no surrender circle is not actually as big as the veteran C circle. So you always have to remember that if you want your units not to surrender, they have to be relatively close to the leader to actually enjoy that bonus. It's total bull crap. I agree. I, I don't fully understand why it works that way. Koenig's calling in a lot of Yagkampf. I have to imagine he's starting to run low. I mean, he had 18. Definitely used the Ball's A favorite ones. Or probably at least halfway through the B phase card. Yagkampf might actually win that out. Beating the Sturm Pioneer. Oh, a grenade went off. I see. Koenig got his first advantage for quite a while. He literally just placed off map and rolled it back. But the weird thing is he left units up here, so he's not actually, like, rolling them back. I see visually what he's doing. And he might get this SKK Zev. That would be pretty huge. That is the most effective AA that Mule has. He doesn't ha even have that much AA. Not that he needs it. He already shot down the DO-217, and that was the only bomber, so there's actually no more air. Other than a recon, there's no more air at all. No armor at all out of Koenig yet. I mean, artillery, excuse me. There's been armor. No artillery. He's on his 13 level. We now see two SK-18s as Mamil starts to enjoy the fruits of his higher income now. Calling in more support weapons. Hardy, I don't know, I'm even sure what it was going for. Things looking really bad here for Koenig. IG-33 trading shells, but the first one to fire always has the advantage because it causes suppression and causes the second one to miss, which then does less damage, which... Obviously means the first one will win the fight. That's a pretty consistent outcome, honestly. Ever IG-33 fires first wins. 
and then meal back to a 1311. Already going after the 88s. How much Air Force? Oh, there's plenty of air left for Mamil. He's got a card of Ju-88 still. His Ju-87 tank buster hasn't died. So yeah, killing off that AA could be really helpful. And again, now Koenig's... I, I don't think he's... I, he must have some flak 43s left. But he appears to continue calling 88s instead. I'm not sure if he has... Ouch. I just hit myself in the face with my mic. Sorry about that. Believe me, that hurt me more than it hurt you. Ow, that really hurt. <laughs> Ow, I'm wounded. I'm wounded. Go go join the Patreon to pay for my medical bills. Oh, I'm wounded. Ow, my chin hurts. Chin hurts a lot, actually. That <laughs> really why did that hurt so much? Emil now making a push down south. 88 in kind of a dumb position. It can't get good lines of sight here on these JU-87s. Shook 3 goes down another of Koenig's precious armor down. JU-87 going for the dive. Dive, dive. Dodges the bomb. I mean, dodges the AA. Because of the suppression, it actually misses the bombing strike. Womp, womp. He worked so hard to get through there. Now we have a whole arty club back here. A little arty party going on. Going after that pack 38, suppressing the infantry here as well. 231 goes down to the, I don't know, oh, this pack 38 here. This pack 38 is going to make another attempt at this Stug 4. Oh, it has very, it's probably like 25, 30% chance to pen. Oh, nope, there we go. But yeah, there's the bounces. Double war for 300 mil coming in. Yag Panzer goes down. Excuse me, Yag Pioneer, not Yag Panzer. Yag Pioneer. Already going after the 88, I assume? Mm, kind of, but not really. I don't know if Emil just missaw that. This already just continued to saturate this tree line. And yeah, I'm not even sure where Koenig can really push to get through now. Because now Emil securely has the income advantage. Of course, he's up 80 points each tick. Just like Koenig was up 80 points each tick during Maverick. The difference is C phase goes on for a very long time. I haven't seen SK-18s used in a long time, actually. It's still a great arty piece. Accurate, fires relatively fast. The main thing is the accuracy. They are really quite accurate. Their price is pretty good, too. 80 points. They're not exactly breaking the bank. But you get a nice six rounds a minute. This accuracy, one thing to note, at least unless I've been told the wrong thing for a long time, the accuracy is not indicative of the accuracy of the arty shots. It's not indicative of the, of the spread of the arty shell. Apparently that's based on um, like tube size, like the size of the arty tube and stuff. It's apparently what it's based on. Please feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, smart people, but I'm pretty sure that that accuracy number really has nothing to do with the actual arty accuracy, like the spread of the, of the shells. Just a fun fact for you. Fun fact I'm relatively confident about, but only relatively. 1410 here from Emil, looking for that 159. Neville over for strike on the 88, easily takes that out. Another A piece down. Skies opened up more. There's a flag 43. I knew there had to be at least one more. Potentially two, but I can't be sure. And this push down south from Emil going very, very well. There's not a ton Kinnan can do to stop it. 
88 finding the 231. 231 is getting the first shot off. Will the 88 land? It does. Took a lot of damage to do it, but it did kill that off. That's his Legionary pushing forward. They'll easily kill the Festoon, and then they can take out that 88. 88 on the run. Will it get away? JU87 staying away from that Flak 43 successfully. Would love to get its hands on those Panzer IVs, but Emil decided to pull off. Interesting. Maybe waiting for his Artie to do some more work on this Flak 43 down here. Yep, Flak 88 down. Emil only at 1410 though. What flag? Oh, he lost his flag here. That's why. Nebelwerfer going after this Flak 43. Could have doing a runner with it. So now we're for probably going to miss. Not probably. It's definitely at this point going to miss. Already now going after the Panzer IVs there. The Mule does a great job microing his Artie and keeping it firing all the time. It doesn't matter at what. He's just making sure it's always shooting. That's always, that's a lot of times my issue with Artie is like, I'll use it. But if I don't see a good target, I just won't. I don't, don't, I don't know. I just don't want it to be firing at something I don't care about killing with Artie. Like a Panzer IV is not like my, because he can just move it, right? But he's not. That's the thing. A lot of times people, players won't move it. They won't notice it and they'll miss it. Black 43 getting hit from an unfortunate angle here by that Stug 4. Ouch. That's unfortunate. Just one of those weird lines of sights you don't see often because players don't get to this point very much. So it's hard to know, like, oh, yeah. My opponent is down south. He'll be able to shoot anything coming down this hill. That's not, it's just not a common place for a unit, for units to get to. So it's not a common line of sight that people like just know off the top of their head. Now we're for looking for the strike. You can see now actually it's holding, it's doing hold fire. To try to release at the right time. Basically what this does is it lines it up. And then if you have some other way to identify if it's actually on target, then he can hit hold the hold fire button and it will immediately fire instead of having to wait for it to aim up again. SBW does go down to the pack uh, 38 there. And uh, Koenig just kind of collapsing here down south. He doesn't have any way to really stop this massive push. And it's not like this pressure in the center has let up that beautiful V for victory income. Giving Emil all the points he could want at this point, at this moment in time. Ooh, pack forty getting a nice penetration there and kill on that Stug four. Fortunately, there is another though. IG thirty three now spotting the pack forty. It will land the shot and the pack forty missed. Ouch! Ouch! And ouchies. More off map? Did he call another one in? Didn't we see three? He must have canceled one. I have to... He, yeah, it looks like he canceled one at some point. Let's see how this off map does. Will it get some kills? Here in the final minutes of this match. Yes, it will. The SDK of Zed, the Alfclair, the Volkdeutsch. Wow, okay. Actually getting some points. Killed there with that. Might get this Pack 43 in the transport. Uh, might just get it now sitting there. Martyr 3 is open top. It'll take a lot of damage. And Koenig finally throws in the towel, despite his off-map actually being relatively effective. 34 minutes and 45 seconds here. 25, 42, 34, 75. Meal taking this one in definitive fashion. Yeah, just nothing really going well for Koenig there. I'm not... I don't think I'm a huge fan of Festung on that map. And I don't think it's bad. I don't think there's a lot of divisions that are bad on Orsha East, because Orsha East just has an interesting mix of... of ranges and stuff there's a lot of mid-rangey things there's not a lot of maps that have such significant mid-range like on that hill everything's thousand to fifteen hundred meter rate like range which is there's not a lot of maps that actually can say that a lot of maps are either really close quarters or they're really long there's not a lot of hole in between maps um this map actually does strike that semi-medium range thing. But then, of course, there is CQC like in the forest in the north, and there's long range with the open area in the south. So, like, there is other things. This 122 did some nice work throughout the game, killing all, easily paying itself back. And that's not to mention the damage and stress it was applying. 
Oh, crap. Sorry. The damage and stress was applying throughout the game. But if you guys enjoyed that, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe for more Steel Division 2 content and consider checking out that Patreon down below. Thanks to all current and past members. It really means a lot and helps keep the channel going. Thanks a bunch, guys, and have a fantastic day.